All right, let's jump right into fixing some of these stripped drywall screws. The spackle that we're going to be using to do that is this dry decks from DAP. More on why I like this one a little bit later. You'll also need a putty knife, some sanding paper, and then some optional wall texture depending on the type of texture that you have on the wall. The first thing that we're going to need to do is prep the hole. So you can see that it does not flush. There's a lot of the drywall paper that is hanging off and we need to get that off. So there's a few different ways you can do it. You can scrape it, you can sand it. My favorite way is to just take a knife and cut it out. Um, that way it's gone and you're not dealing with it. However, we put, or at least I like to put two applications of the spackle on. So as long as you're getting it to sit flat with the first application, then it shouldn't be a problem by the second one. But if you're just going to do one application, then you absolutely need to make sure that it's nice and clean. So um, I do a combination of knife and sandpaper just to make sure, uh, nice and, knife and sanding just to make sure. Then we're going to take a little bit of the spackle here. Less is more in this case. You are not trying to uh, overfill the hole simply for this first application. All we're going to be doing is making sure that we're jamming it down in there. You can uh, get more inside, I guess, in my opinion, with your finger than, with you, can, than you can with a putty knife. Uh, so the first thing that we're doing is just shoving as much of it as we can down in there. Then we'll take the putty knife and um, uh, make it a little bit more pretty and put even more into uh, the hole so that you'll never know that it's there. But this is the first step, smearing it all over. Don't care about how pretty it's going to look because we are going to fix it. So then we'll take the putty knife and you can see most of it just scrapes off. The reason that it doesn't all scrape off is because this is a textured wall um, and some of it just sits and fits in the grooves, but I'll show you how we get to that here in just a minute. And you can also see how it goes on pink, but it's starting to dry white. That's what is unique about this particular spackle. You can tell when it's time to sand it or paint it. I myself am quite impatient, so I have a tendency to wait 10 or 15 minutes, think that it's completely dry, and then start sanding or painting and screw it all up. So this is kind of an idiot-proof way to make sure that you're not doing it too early. You should wait, I think it says one to five hours, just to make sure that, uh, that it's completely dry. And that's what your holes should look like. Again, you can see the texture on there so that on the wall. So we're going to have to match that later. But your next step after it dries completely, you can see that it's no longer pink. Uh, it is white, which means it's dried completely. Now we're just going to sand it all um, to prep for the second application. And I'm a big believer in less is more, so I'm going to take a wet rag and just wipe off the excess spackle. You don't need it there. Uh, it only makes it more difficult to try to match the texture later if you have a bunch of excess dried spackle around the hole that you really don't need. Now the second coat here, almost like a second skim coat, serves uh, really one purpose, and that is to make sure that when you sand it down, all of the spackle and the hole is completely flush with the drywall. So the spackle has a tendency, this one says that it doesn't, but mud and spackle has a tendency to dry and shrink. And when that happens, you can oftentimes still see the hole. So what we're going to do here is just make sure that it's completely covering the hole and it's raised slightly above where the drywall is so that when we sand it, it's completely flush. And that looks really good. Now when we go to sand it, what you're not going to want to do is press down because that's going to dig too far into the hole. You want to keep the sanding block flat against the wall so that it's even. If you start going like, you know, pressing too hard into it, then you're going to actually sand out what we just, what we just did. So. So now we're going to give it a light sanding to make sure it's completely flush with the drywall uh, and that there's no excess spackle or dried spackle um, hanging around. I will take a wet rag and do the same thing again, but this time being much, much more careful and I'm not going to try to take all of it off 
uh, simply because it's not that big of a deal and the texture will cover this but if you get the wet rag within that the holes it can pull out the spackle so be careful pro tip here sometimes the texture before you spray it can glob or make imperfections so I spray it on some paper or something prior to putting it on the wall but now that that's dried it looks really really good it's hard to tell but that texture is very very thin if you ran your hand over it you would barely be able to feel it so once we paint that it will look great you can barely even tell where the holes are uh, now and so that came out really really well